big proponent for creating authentication from scratch. And in episode number 250, I showed you how to do exactly this. And then in episode number 270, I showed you how Rails 3.1 makes this even easier by using has secure password, which will automatically generate the password hash. However, what I showed you in these episodes is pretty basic authentication, and we may want to add a couple features to make authentication a lot nicer. For example, on the login page, it would be nice if we had a checkbox here for remembering the user and a link for resetting their password if they forget it. So let me show you how to do that here. Now for this, I'm going to extend what I created in episode number 270. So I'm using Rails 3.1 here, even though what I'll show you works just as well in Rails 3.0. Now let's start off by creating the remember me checkbox. In the past, what we did is store the user ID in the session. But the problem is that this is temporary and we want something more permanent. So let's instead use a permanent cookie. But the problem is we have the user ID that we're storing in there and we don't wanna store that in there because it's easily guessable and changeable by the user. Instead, what we want is a unique token which is unguessable that we can store in a cookie. So we'll need to store this unique token for each user. So let's generate a migration that adds a column, let's call it auth token to users table. And it's a string type column. And then we'll migrate the database. So now we just need some way to generate a unique token to fill that column. And for that, I like to add a little method to a u our user model called generate token. And this just accepts a column name so we can have multiple uh, token columns later on, and it uses secure random, which active support provides to generate a random string. And then it just makes sure that token is unique by making sure no other user exists with that same token. If another user does exist, then it just goes through the loop again, uh, generating a new random string. So now we can just add a before create callback here to generate a unique um, auth token each time. So that way that column will be filled, filled for each new user. Now, if you have existing users in the database, you'll probably want to add some kind of rake task to generate um, auth tokens the first time you add this feature. So now when the user logs in, we want to store this unique token in a cookie instead of using the session. So we'll need to change this line right here to use our cookies. Uh, we can say permanent to make it permanent and set our auth token to the user's auth token, which will be that unique generated token we made. And when the user logs out in the destroy action here, we just have to delete that cookie. So cookies.delete uh, our auth token. And this will make it so, you know, every user that logs in will be permanent, but you may want to make this conditional with a checkbox. So in the login form, it's pretty easy to change this to add a remember me checkbox. I'll just paste in some code to do this. Uh, pretty simple, it'll just pass this through as a remember me parameter. And then back in our controller, we can just add an if else statement here so that if they remember me is set, then it's permanent. Otherwise, we just take out that permanent option here, just like that. And then finally, we just need to use that auth token in the application controller when we fetch our user in that current user method. So we can do find by auth token here and go by cookies auth token. And then only if that cookie is actually set. There we go. So now when we go to the login form, we have a remember me checkbox to remember the user and store them in a permanent cookie. So that was pretty easy to add. Now let's see what's involved in adding a forgotten password link here to reset the password in our login form. First, let's add a forgotten password link to our login form here. So uh, let's add a link to uh, say forgotten password. And then let's link to, let's call it new password reset path. So we haven't made this yet, but let's make a password reset resource uh, for doing this. So let's generate a new controller, call it password resets, and give it a new action. And then in our routes file, instead of the generated route here, we want to treat it as a resource. So we'll just make a new resource called password resets. Now, even though it's not a model backing resource, uh, this will still work for us. Now inside the template for this new action, what we want is a form where the user types in their email address and then requests a password reset. So let me just paste in some code so you don't have to watch me type it all, but it's pretty basic, just a simple form tag because we don't have a model backing resource here. And it'll just go to the create action of that password resets controller. And then uh, just ask them for their email address. 
So inside that controller, let's make that create action. And we'll just fetch our user here, find by email with that params email address, which was passed in the form there. And then we want to reset the password, actually just send an email with instructions for resetting the password. So let's make a new method on this user model called send a password reset if the user is present. And then we'll just redirect to the root URL with a little notice saying um, email sent with password reset instructions. Now you may have noticed that this will appear that it's actually sending an email even if a given user was not found in our database. This just makes things a little bit more secure so that bad guys can't come in and determine if a given user email address is actually inside of our database or not. Uh, you may want to alter this depending on what user experience you want. So next we need to go inside our user model and add that send password reset method that we called. So it's called send password reset. And what we want to do inside of here is basically send an email containing a uh, token for the password reset request. And this should expire after uh, a couple hours or so. So we'll need to add a couple columns to our users table to handle this. So let's generate a migration called add password reset stuff to users. And it's called password reset token to store the unique token to generate. And we want a password reset sent at so we can expire this. So that's a date time column. And then run our migrations. So now we can use that generate token method we created earlier to generate a unique uh, password reset token. And we also want to store the time it was sent at. So um, let's store that password uh, reset sent time to our current time zone time and save our user model. Now we just have to add a mailer to deliver the password reset request. So let's generate a new mailer here and call it user mailer and let's give it a password reset uh, mailer action here. So inside our send password reset method we can call a user mailer dot password reset and pass in our user model which is going to be self and just call deliver on this to send it. Now we can customize our mailer to take that user and assign it to an instance variable here so we can access it in our template and then we want to mail to the user's email address and our subject will be a password reset like that and then inside our mailer template I'll just change the text inside of here to give them some instructions and notice I'm going to send them to the edit password you reset URL so it's going to actually go to the edit action of the password resets controller now this isn't actually technically the best restful kind of approach but it'll work for us here now in order to get URLs to work inside of mailers you'll need to customize your environment config a little bit uh, in your development.rb file you can just add this line right here and you'll want to add another line in your production as well with your own custom domain all right let's try out what we have so far on our login page we have our forgotten password link and then on here we can just type in our email address and hit reset password and it'll redirect us back to our home page and if we check out the development log as you can see here it sent the email and it included the password reset URL correctly here and notice it's including the password reset token as the ID parameter in the URL so next we have to make this edit action in our password resets controller so in here we'll make a new edit action and we'll fetch a user based off of that uh, password reset token that's passed in as the ID parameter here notice I'm using the bang version of the method here so that it'll raise a 404 if the uh, user token isn't found and then we can make a template for this action here so I'll just paste in some code to handle this here uh, notice we're doing a form 4 call this time because we need to edit some attributes on the user model and we need to specify a URL here because uh, it'll would otherwise go to the users controller so it's going to the password resets controller it'll go to the update action passing in the reset password token as the ID still and inside of here the first top part here is just displaying any errors that may exist and then we just have a couple fields for changing the password and password confirmation and that's it and so back in our controller we want to add the update action here and actually fetch the user in the same way as the edit action because we're based off the token 
And um, the first thing to check here is if the uh, token reset token has been expired. So we can check user password reset sent at is less than two hours ago. Then if it is, then it's considered expired. And so we should actually redirect to our new password reset path and give an alert saying password reset has expired. Just like that. So then if that passes, we can actually try updating our user model, update attributes, uh, given our user parameters that are passed in. And if that passes, we can say redirect to our um, root URL with a notice saying password has been reset. And then finally, if there are, are any validation errors, we just want to render our edit template again. So that's it. Let's try this out by pasting in the URL that was sent in the email. And now if I try, you know, setting something that's an invalid uh, password because our password confirmation does not match, we get an error message. If I do a valid password, update password, and then password has been reset. So it actually saves that new password. Now you can use this password reset idea here I showed you to add other features as well, such as account confirmation, where after the user registers, you just send them an email. And it's basically almost exactly like password resets, except instead of uh, actually going to reset the password, you just um, change a field in the database to confirm that they're actually uh, fully registered and confirmed in the email. Well, that's it for this episode on creating a remember me checkbox and a forgotten password link. Now, some tools such as Devise add all this functionality for you, but I still prefer to do it from scratch because I find I need to customize a lot of this anyway, especially on the view and template side. Even though there are a number of steps involved to do this, it's all quite basic and easy to add, as I showed you here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next week.